Hey folks, Rob Satch from Feedback Ranch. I'm going to show you how to batch convert JPEGs over to WebP. You can do 10 at a time, 20 at a time, all sorts of them. And I'm going to do it on a Mac. Don't know how to do it on a PC. Don't really care. Okay, so this is going to allow you to compress images for web. So here are the tools we're going to use. We are going to use this little thing called Pixelmator Pro, which is 50 bucks. Pixelmator Pro, it's worth your $50. You will make it up pretty much the first hour you have to convert images. You know, when you're doing websites, you might have like 50 images. And there, and uh, so here, I'm just going to get right into how to do this. You're going to head up here and you're going to go into shortcuts. And shortcuts used to be automation. So if I hit this, I go to shortcuts. All right, so now you have to have had Pixelmator Pro. You had to have gotten it installed get it all optimal, get it all turned on and everything. And now in shortcuts, I'm going to introduce you how to do some shortcuts. So I'm going to delete this one I just did and kind of did it wrong because I always forget. So here's what we're going to do on the side here. You'll see there's all shortcuts. There's some quick action ones. We're just going to stick with the all shortcuts. And then up here I can hit plus. Okay. And now I'm going to name this up on the top here real quick. So I'm going to say Ra Roberto um, 1920 Web P. Okay. All right, so now that might not make any sense, but over here, there's kind of two things. I can look at the apps or information. I'm going to go to information, and I'm going to say use as quick action right away. And I'm going to put this in the finer. So you hit the I, you go to use as quick action, and what that allows you to do is in the finer now, if I go to, if I right click and I go down to quick actions, it'll show up here, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is go back up to the little apps here. We're going to be using Pixelmator Pro, and there's a lot of these guys. You can batch convert or clean up or remove backgrounds, and this will do up to like 200 images. Um, it doesn't do it, It's it, there's some quirks to it, but it works really well. And so what we're going to be doing here is there's a couple little steps. So the first one is is to receive any from an input. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look for one from Pixelmator called Resize. So not Resize Media, the blue one, but the Resize Image from Pixelmator Pro. I'm going to drag it over here and basically what we're going to do is now it's saying now if i had done this first and forgot this this little command this shortcut input would say file it has to say shortcut input but here's what's happening now i'm using my my quick actions to grab an image and it's going to send it over to here and so i'm going to go to size here this has to say shortcut input I'm going to go longest edge. I like to control the longest edge. I'm going to take the longest edge of this file. I'm going to make it 2100. You know, if I, so about 1920 or maybe I could say 2100. So now what it's doing is it's grabbing that and it's, it's resizing that into a 2100. It's still the same file format. So now what we're going to do is grab Pixelmator's convert image. So go to Pixelmator Pro convert image. If you search convert again, I'm up here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop this over. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take it. We use the quick action to push the, the shortcut input image over to grab it and change the longest edge. Now that resized image is going to go to, it says Pixelmator. I'm going to pick on, click on the Pixelmator Pro and go down to WebP. Now that would take it and keep it the same full compression, but I'm going to go show more. And now I can go and I can say, hey, let's get lower quality. I usually go down to about 30%, about, about a third of it here. Because I'm trying to take images and make them significantly more compressed. Now there's one last thing we got to do or it doesn't work. Type, Go up here and type out. We're going to grab stop and output. And I'm going to click that down. And now it's going to take that converted image and it's going to output it. All right. So now if I hit stop or X, now it's right here, Roberto. Now it's another fun thing. Just, so you know, you could go up here and you could say command shortcut and I'd be like command shift zero will do that. And so we'll just kind of, I know you get a tab out of it. So now if I do command shift zero on an image. So if I come in here, I always have these folders. So here it was 2.2 megabytes, 4.2. two. Let's grab a handful of these. I'm just going to throw them in a folder here real quick. My kids might come, but we go folder. All right, so here's a bunch of images. If I select these all and I go quick actions, 
And if I go to this new Roberto, here's my new quick action. I'm going to go like that. Now, here's what's goofy. Is you do that. You sit there. You don't know if it's working. It's super frustrating. It doesn't have any progress bars. Sometimes it goes right away. Sometimes it takes a long time. Now, something appears to have gone awry here because it says it's two kilobytes, which is way too small. I just think that it's it'll catch up here. There you go. So we just went from 2.3 megs. And we brought that down to 48 kilobytes. Now we're ready for web. That will save you tons of time. Now, depending on the compression rates, um, it'll be good. You will want to, you know, one thing that I do is I come in here. I put all of my stock that we use into, I use the cloud-based Adobe. And what I'll do is I'll grab all these images. And I like to get the longest edge correct and, and get them all standardized. So I'll come here. I'll share it. I go custom settings, and then what I do is I say, okay, it's gonna be a JPEG, and I'm gonna to go to a custom size, and then I do the long side, and I'll make it 24 image, 2400 pixels. Quality, custom quality of about 30%, and I'll export those out, and what that'll do is it'll give me a good starting point so that I can get them all compressed. So that's really powerful, and you know, it's worth saying that if you just open up an image in Pixelmator Pro, so I change it so it always opens, and if you go file, export you can come in here and you can say you, you go format choose webp and then you can go instead of original size you would go custom size and then you can change the you know let's just say i want this to be you know maybe it's going to be small so i go 900 pixels and i'm going to compress this way down because i really want it small and this will be like the gallery image reduced i'll put that in my folder hit export now I took that image and I've made it, it'll take a second, but that sucker is now seven kilobytes or something like that. So that's how you reduce files. Now, uh, last little thing, if you ever come in and you go to the Google page speed checker, Google page speed or whatever it's called, page speed insights. And what you can do, you can grab an image or you can grab your website. And this is a, a page that I don't really spend that much time on. It has a lot of slow images in here but um in fact i haven't even updated that <laughs> it's kind of funny um i haven't spent a lot of time on this but what happens is you'll be able to come in and you can find out like are there images that we need to it'll diagnose performance issues and it almost always tells you that there's images that need compressing you want to consider how many images you have total on your page and you should probably try and keep it to under two or three megs at the most, if not much smaller. So anyways, that's how you batch convert WebP files. Hopefully that's helpful. Sorry you had to listen to my Minnesotan accent. And uh, good luck. God bless.